Welcome to the Yukon in North 61. I haven't uh, posted a video for a while. I've been going to the range but haven't been filming. I'm even golfing, so sorry about that. But uh, trying to get fit again for hunting season. So I've also been reading about World War II, which is one of my favorite things. I actually have a history major from a long, long time ago. And one of the questions that gets asked a lot in World War II when you take a look at forums is people get confused about tank rounds. And the Sherman tank, which was used throughout the Allies, the Canadians used them, the Americans of course made them and used them, and the British used them. And uh, they had a number of different armaments, uh, starting with a 75 millimeter Mark III, all the way up to uh, the Easy 8 had a 76 millimeter, and then the uh, British put a Firefly together, which had a 17 pounder. These were all three-inch, basically bored rifle or cannons. So, what was the difference between them? So, one thing I can bring with me that uh, a lot of people that uh, enter into this discussion don't have is a real pretty good knowledge of hunting cartridges of 30 caliber, which is basically one-tenth the diameter of the three-inch cannons. So, uh, I've used a lot. Here's 7.62 by 39, which is a 311 diameter caliber. Let's be careful with that. Here's the old 3030. Here's my favorite, 30 odd 6. And here's one that I've been using lately is the 300 Win Mag. So you can see, although these are all 30 calibers, that's a 311, these are all 308s, um, you can see quite a difference in case size. And the same thing happened in the cannons. And I've tried to figure out the equivalency of where these would be at. Okay, here's my math. So the 75 millimeter Mark III had a case capacity of 1,440 cubic uh, centimeters, and if you scale that down, that's about equivalent to a 30 carbine uh, case capacity if you adjust. All the way up to the 17 pounder, which was like a 300 H and H. So this is from the good old tank museum in Bobbington. Is a blow up replica of the 75 millimeter Mark III. And this, if I scale it down to an equivalent caliber, would be like a 30 M1 carbine, which is smaller than this. It's actually off of this scale. So it has very little powder capacity. Fired a shell of almost 15 pounds, 14.6 pounds, to 2,000 at 30 feet per second. And uh, very, very low powered. It had a 40 caliber uh, barrel, which is equivalent to a 12.32 inch 30 caliber barrel, so a very, very small barrel. And the whole cartridge weighed 19.92 pounds, so most of the weight of the cartridge was the bullet. It had a very, very small case, very small propellant charge. This allowed it to shoot a really good uh, thin walled shell that had tremendous um, amount of explosive in it, so it was a good explosive shell, but as an anti-tank round it was pretty poor uh, because it was slow, shooting that 14.6 pound shot at 2,000 feet per second, it could maybe defeat 60 millimeters of armor. And all the big uh, tanks from the German side had more than 60 millimeters of armor, certainly when they were facing you. The, the, uh, Tiger 2s had 185 millimeters. The Tiger 1s had about 100 millimeters. And the Panthers had sloped armor, which was probably the equivalent of about 120, 140 millimeters. So this couldn't cope. Um, so it was a great high explosive shell, which was useful against people, infantry that were attacking. It's also useful against anti-tank guns that were not armored or not, uh, they might have had an armored face, but you could shoot this over and have lethal explosion that would kill, kill the people that were trying to kill you. So this was a, 
very good all-purpose round, but it was not a very good anti-tank round. So this was equivalent to a 30 M1, which I just read a great book about Korea, and uh, what the Americans were finding is they could hardly even penetrate the sheep coats and heavy coats of the, uh, of the of the Chinese. It just didn't have penetration power, and neither did this. So this again from the Tank Museum in Bobbington is the 17 pounder. So it too has a three inch diameter shell. In this case it was 17 pounds, it was a little longer, uh, but it was going 2700 feet per second, 2900 feet per second, 2950 feet per second. And uh, it had a longer barrel, a 55 caliber barrel, which is a little short. That's only equivalent to a 16.94 inch uh, 30 caliber barrel. Uh, so there was a lot of blast that came out of the barrel. Uh, people were blinded. Um, so this was a, basically a magnum round in a really short barrel. Um, when you take a look at the scale of things, when you scale that barrel down, that's a very, very short barrel. Uh, however, it had enough speed that it could penetrate um, most of the German tanks. And they actually invented a uh, discarding sabot for this that increased the speed up well over 4,000 feet per second. They could basically kill anything, although you couldn't hit stuff much past 500 yards for the earlier versions. Eventually, they made that better. Eventually, they upscaled this to the 84 millimeter 20 pounder, which they used all through uh, the early Cold War. And eventually, it became the basis of the 105, 120 millimeters even. So this was a tremendous uh, advance. Uh, because of the pressure, it had a not as good a high explosive round because the shell had to be a little thicker. Although later on they reduced the charge and it was a little bit better. And they could barely make this work in a Sherman. So it was a very uncomfortable tank. Uh, they had to jerry-rig it into by, 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 by turning it and making it modified. Uh, reducing the length of recoil and it just barely worked inside a Sherman tank but they did make it work and the British and Canadians had this as an advantage the Americans never did. The Americans went with a 76 millimeter as their next uh, and it was only equivalent to a 7.62 by 39 so this little case here. So it was efficient but it wasn't a great tank killer. It was much better than the 75 millimeter uh, the Germans used a 3-inch uh, in their Panther, and it was more like a 30-odd 6, but they made a long enough barrel. They had a 70 caliber barrel, which is equivalent to a 21 and a half inch barrel, which is still a little short, but it's much, much better than the, the shorter 55 caliber barrel, which would be like a 17-inch barrel in a, in a 30 caliber rifle. So uh, it almost became the equivalent of the 17-pounder, but not quite because they used a longer barrel. So speed is a thing that beats armor because speed really increases the kinetic energy because it's speed squared leads to your energy. So the, when you have something that's going 100 feet per second and something that's going 200 feet per second, the 200 feet per second doesn't hit twice as hard, it hits four times as hard. And that's what defeats armor. Let me give you an idea of how this works in the sporting world. This is my 300 Magnum. This is a fierce firearm made in Canada. It's got a carbon barrel, carbon wrap barrel. It's uh, quite accurate. Got a 12 power scope with ballistic dots. I'm. This is an easy 600 yard rig for a sheep sized game. And uh, that speed really helps to flatten trajectory and make things easier to uh, easier to hit at long range. The same advantage happened with the 17 pounder. That has a 24 inch barrel, which is more like a 75, 78 caliber barrel. And if you want to take a look at how much handier a 18 inch barrel is, that's my 350 rem mag, which is in a Remington 600. That's an 18 and a half inch barrel. So. But if you try to shoot a 300 Magnum in this, you'd get unbelievable blast, which is what happened with the 17 pounder. People talked about them being blinded, having to close their eyes and not being able to see where the round hit. So it's a good thing it shot flat, flatter, because 
this thing was uh, in some ways a lot harder to use and they hadn't had any experience with anything like it but it had power this round when it's not the blow-up variety weighed 37 pounds 9 ounces so it was uh, twice as heavy as this round and a lot harder to, to use so this had 17 pound shell and the 20 pounds of brass case and, and powder to, to make it go so this looks like a pretty much like a magnum rifle round and it was a magnum round that allowed uh, the American the Canadians and the British to take on the big cats the Tigers the Panthers the Tiger twos in fact it was likely a Canadian from the from the Sherbrooke Fusiliers who took out uh, Michael Whitman's tank. Michael Whitman was a, a famous ace, tiger ace, and they used the 17-pounder. If they were using this, uh, Michael Whitman would still be around. And the, the Russians also used a 76-millimeter round, which was a little bit bigger than this, a lot smaller than this. The tigers were almost impervious in the eastern front when all they had was a 76 millimeter. Later they moved to an 85 millimeter. Um, this round actually penetrated better than the American 90 millimeter on the Pershings because it had a little more speed. And it's speed that penetrates, that, that allows penetration of our steel armor. So that's what I've been doing. This is right out of, right out of left field for my viewers. But it's kind of interesting taking a look at history and seeing that your understanding of ballistics can actually help you understand what was going on in World War II with the greatest conflict in the history of man. And one that thankfully we won. And uh, my uncles uh, fought up through Italy and fought, uh, fought in the Navy and uh, fought all over Europe. And uh, thank goodness somebody developed something like this because it allowed us to in some part win that war. Thanks for watching. Okay. You can take a look at a cartridge, whether it's big or small, whether it's a cannon shell or this 30-30 shell for a, for a deer cartridge. You've got a case. That case is full of propellant. A primer will lift that propellant off. It'll drive the bullet out the bore. It almost becomes like an engine and the cylinder is the bullet and this is the expansion chamber and the powder creates a lot of pressure and blows that cylinder right out of the barrel. Now you can increase the size of your propellant chamber. So there's a 300 Magnum. 3030 has about 30 grains of powder. This 300 Magnum takes about 85 grains of powder. So it's going to have probably two and a half times the energy of the 3030 just because it's got a lot more propellant to, to create more velocity. And velocity is what really creates the speed or the power because it's velocity squared times the weight of the projectile equals your kinetic energy, depending what units you're using, there are different formulas to use. And that speed is what blows through steel armor. In fact, you can get, even get smaller cases, like there's a 762 by 39 which is the Russian cartridge, and you can get a 30M1 carbine, which is almost all bullet and, uh, and, uh, and no case. And you can also get the same with tanks. There's all bullet, very little case, similar to a 30M1 carbine. That's the 75mm uh, M3 cartridge, which was used in the early Shermans, very slow. Here's the 17-pounder, which fires a 3-inch bullet, 3-inch shell as well. When it's big enough, I guess it's called a shell. But look at the size of that case. Very little comparison. So there's our 3-inch shells in tanks in World War II. And there's a bunch that also fit in between here, all the way from the 76-millimeter Russian round, the 76-millimeter... M1, which was a, an upgrade to this, to the 75mm Panther round, but the 17-pounder was the king of the hill.